everybody, it's Ann Beebe. Today is Friday, June 26, 2020. I'm Barb Hammer. So today I want to talk about another uh, YouTuber who uh, talks about China. That's his big topic is China. I talk about, talk about different things, um, but China has been a big focus of mine since last year, but I don't talk exclusively about China. Anyway, Nathan Rich. I want to talk about Nathan Rich. So he's a pretty high profile um, YouTuber, uh, and his focus is China. He is actually on platforms inside China, Billy Billy, um, and Weibo. But the thing about Nathan Rich is he's kind of missing in action. So he's kind of disappeared from social media since, uh, May 12th. I think actually, May 21st was the last time I saw anything from him. Yeah, May 21st here. This is his Twitter page. So his last post was about his video um, that the new face of COVID-19 was France. More disinformation. Yeah, that's the thing. So May 21st was the last time. This was some reply. I don't know what this is about. It says, you don't buy a damn. I don't give a damn. I don't know what that was about. Anyway, so he's mysteriously missing. Um, supposedly a big uh, social media figure with a big channel, almost a uh, half million. Um, and he, um, so Billy Billy is the uh, sort of the uh, uh, equivalent of YouTube uh, in China. And, uh, I think I have, oh, I have images. Yes. So this is his Billy Billy page. And there's been nothing there either. Let's see, I forget which. No, that's not it. <laughs> there. Yeah, so this is his WeChat. And it's been quiet there too. So um, I've been, I noticed this uh, a couple of weeks ago. And I checked again today and um, I checked on YouTube to see if anybody was talking about Nathan and his, the missing Nathan, missing Nathan, Nathan Rich. So this is a propaganda, anti-Chinese propaganda channel, channel Prime in China. And it's some American guy. I don't know. I, I think he's in China. I'm not, sh no, I'm not sure where he is. I don't know. But he's a big overweight guy. <laughs> I... Um, I don't know why he's full screen on camera. I don't know. I can, yeah, there he is. <laughs> if you can see. So I don't know. He does that full screen on camera. I don't do that. I don't force people to look at my ugly mug, uh, <laughs> like that. Anyway, so he did this video. He says, Nathan Rich is jailed in communist China, communist China. Yeah. Um, so he's, he's claiming that Nathan has gotten in trouble with uh, Chinese authorities and has gone missing or disappeared. And that's always code for, and the, for the propaganda that's code for arrested, but I don't think that's what's going on. Uh, but this guy, I have watched his videos before, so he will talk about Nathan Rich actually has kind of a, uh, checkered past. Um, where's that? No, that's not it. Hang on. This is it. So this is a propaganda outlet, but this does talk about, he does have a, a, a serious criminal record. Um, his background, uh, he has a Wikipedia page, um, but I think somebody said that he actually created this. So he, um, uh, he's not some, you know, nobody independent YouTuber that's appeared on the scene and his channel is kind of like Daniel Dumbrell's. It kind of, uh, came out of nowhere. I don't know, a year or two ago and just took off, you know, which is not natural. It just means that someone's being promoted aggressively. So he's not, he's, he's supposedly pro China and he, sells products that say, I love China, but he produces, um, disinformation about China. So he supposedly defends China, 
but at the same time, he doesn't really tell you the truth to debunk all the propaganda about China. I made a video. Um, I mean, I think a couple of months ago about him and how he he did a great video about uh, the COVID, uh, what I call the Merca virus, because it clearly has come from the U.S. You know, there was the U.S., definitely not China anyway. Um, yeah, so the virus, it seems it was probably circulating in the U.S., being masked undetected last year before it even showed up in China, mysteriously after <laughs> the, the Wuhan uh, military games where the very sick US team turned up. So he, yeah, he made a video and it was a, it was a great video about um, that the virus had, you know, oh, this was it, the coronavirus conspiracy and did it come from the U.S.? And he provided so much evidence, really good evidence, and um, uh, showing that the virus was circulating in the U.S., so that there was an outbreak in the U.S. And then he kind of, you know, because he's disinformation, then he kind of debugs it. Oh, there's nothing to this. So he pushes the narrative, you know, the prop. Actually, he pushes the propaganda narrative that the virus came from China. Like he does it. And, but the latest video he did, his very last video, um, is saying that it came, like it showed up in France. He says it calls the new face of COVID-19 is France. And he shows there were cases in October of last year in France, but I think those came from the military games. So he's not really debunking the propaganda that the the anti Chinese propaganda that the virus uh, originated in China, you know, it's that's what's really disgusting. People think he's pro China, but how can you be pro China when you're still, you know, you take us on this? This is disinformation. I've explained this before. Disinformation is just, they give you a lot of truth. These figures give you a lot of truth, or they take you on this journey. So, like in his video about how the virus is circulating in the US, he takes you on this journey and he shows you all the evidence that shows um, that the virus was circulating in the US last year. And then he comes back to the official narrative. Like, you know, that's the thing. I don't go after the straight propagandists. There are all these different disinformation assets that do that. So, um, <laughs> What I go after is the disinformation where people are giving you some truth, but then they go back to the official narrative and they're not really telling you, explaining the real issues behind a lot of the propaganda against China. You know, they don't talk about the system. They'll talk about Daniel Dumbrell. They'll talk about racism, racism. They'll talk about racism, um, but not about... Um, the systemic issues, you know, the, the West wants to neoliberalize China and it almost succeeded in the 1980s. That's the thing. And it could happen again. So this is the danger. It's not about race. There is racism. So in conjunction with um, like the COVID, all the propaganda about the COVID-19 and uh, communist China, well, China has a mixed market economy. It's just not neoliberalized. So there's capitalism there. It's just that oligarchs are not controlling policy there. So anyway, so that's the problem. Nathan is a disinformation asset. And um, it's interesting his background. So he um, he has he's from uh, Southern California, Los Angeles, and he has connections to Hollywood. And, you know, it's generally known <laughs> by those who are well-informed that Hollywood is closely tied to like Pentagon and the CIA to produce propaganda. So he's from Southern California, Has he's worked in, he has an IMDB uh, page. So he has done work in Hollywood and uh, he's a techie supposedly. But in his background, so his mother was Jewish, but I think she got mixed up in the um, 
Scientology cult. It's a cult. And, um, and then she sent him off to, um, uh, Scientology, uh, boarding school or ranch or something. Yeah. Ranch school. And he suffered terrible abuse there. And so, uh, he had to deal with that. And, um, he got mixed up in drugs and he was a street kid and that's what this article. And so he ended up with a serious criminal record, you know, with drugs and everything. Um, yeah, that's Nathan anyway. So, and, uh, he's always got dark, dark circles under his eyes and his videos. And I think he suffers from depression. He probably struggles with a lot of this stuff. Um, but it's kind of interesting how he, has this background in Hollywood and then in Scientology and he left Scientology and I think he's estranged from his family. Um, but he shows up in China and, um, supposedly living in China, but, um, this guy, uh, claims that he, um, claims that I think he said before that Nathan doesn't actually have like a permanent, uh, status in China that he, I don't know. I don't know that he even has a work visa, especially works in tech, but, um, this guy says that he, uh, yeah, that's him. <laughs> I don't really, anyway, I don't really his name. Um, he says that, uh, Nathan, uh, Li he lives in China, stays in China on a tourist visa. And so that means that he has to leave every three months and like re-enter the country. So he and his girlfriend, um, so he shows his, so his girlfriend, he and his girlfriend, um, and his girlfriend, I've got Nathan's website. Uh, yeah, he and his uh, this loads. Yeah, that's his girlfriend, Serena. So he and his girlfriend, they leave China and they, you know, they'll, they'll go to a neighboring country. Um, and then they have to re-enter China. I don't know if she's Chinese or she, I mean, she's Asian. Um, and this is, oh, this is his website. So um, yeah, he's fairly high profile. He's been, whoops, that's not it. Sorry. <sighs> Hang on. Yeah. So he's been featured in a lot of, and mentioned in a lot of media. So he's not a nobody, even Chinese media. So he appeared in a documentary by Leah Remini. She's a, an actress who uh, was in Scientology and then she left, but she did, uh, she made a documentary about Scientology that Nathan appeared in and talked about the abuse, his experiences, but you know, uh, he's not a nobody. He's not some independent. He's been aggressively promoted and featured in mainstream media. Uh, what was n interesting is when he made that um, video about the coronavirus conspiracy, where he talked about what was going on in the U.S., the outbreak in the U.S., but then he debunks it. I noticed he's tried to get the attention of Joe Rogan, and he wanted, I guess he wanted to be on Joe Rogan's uh, program. And Joe Rogan, I think, has left YouTube, and he's either gone to Spotify or going to Spotify. Um, so Nathan Rich was trying to get more attention. I could tell that. And he, oh yeah. So he, he will go after the New York times, which is just obvious propaganda. How hard is, to, is it to debunk propaganda? It's not hard really at all. Um, so he's going after temple, um, some other big alternative media, uh, figures on the right. Sargon of a That's, um, uh, Carl Benjamin, I think that's his real name, and and Bill Maher. So he's trying to get some more attention, but he's just suddenly dropped off the face of the earth. I have learned. So um, someone uh, contact that I have who um, 
has more tech savvy than I do, was able to look up the IP address for Nathan's um, website. So what he found was that Nathan's website, the IP address is in Oregon now. So I think, I don't think Nathan, this guy thinks Nathan has been arrested in China because of his criminal background. I don't think that's what happened. I think, I think Nathan is back in the US now. That's what I think. And I think, I don't know why he left. He's left for some reason. Could be he's burned out. The guy could be, I mean, I could see that. Um, maybe he's burned out. I'm going to call Nathan. He's a limited hangout. He's a limited hangout because a lot of disinformation figures, that's what they are. They give you some truth and then, you know, they take you back to the official narrative. I don't know. I think he's kind of burned out. I don't know. I mean, I can kind of get that. It's kind of hard putting out content. Um, I don't do it for money. I will never monetize my channel. I don't have a thousand subs, but I would never do that on YouTube. Yeah, I'm not doing this for money. So it's very strange that Nathan, Nathan has disappeared. And um, this is his uh, Patreon page. So I think, you know, between the merchandise and I don't know if he's got PayPal. Um, so the minimum you can donate is $6 a month. And he's got 410 Patreon patrons on Patreon. So you do the math. That's, um, that's over $2,000 a month. And some of those might be even, you know, the $12 or $25 a month. So, um, I think he was probably doing all right. He had hired, I think he was, and I had noticed on his website that he, he was looking to hire some help or something. So his girlfriend helps him out. Um, I don't know. It's a lot of work. You know, he, he puts out pretty professional looking videos and he has Chinese subtitles. Um, but from what I understand, his channel, um, took off like Daniel Dombrell's took off in a very short period of time. And um, someone pointed out, well, you know, he could have Chinese subscribers. And I think he does on YouTube. Um, somebody said, um, you know, uh, YouTube is blocked on China, but I guess I, probably with a VPN, you could get around that, I don't know. Um, but there are enough people outside of China that would be interested in his content. But that's not natural for a channel to grow that fast. It really isn't. Um, I mean, my <laughs> my content is edgier, I guess, because um, I'm caught in this uh, false dichotomy. So people think you're either pro-China, pro-China, or anti-China. Well, the pro-China figures in social media tend to be uh, disinformation assets. <laughs> so they're not really giving you the full truth. And I try to just tell the truth about you know, all the de destabilization campaigns and the uh, the color revolutions and who's behind them. I, I don't say the pro, I don't say like Daniel Dumbrell doesn't even say Hong Kong riots anymore. And he, he, Hong Kong protests and Tiananmen protests. Yeah, they're just protests. Yeah, right. That's Daniel Dumbrell. <laughs> he doesn't tell you that, the, you know, he'll talk about, he might casually mention CIA uh he doesn't really connect all the dots and he doesn't yeah so when you're saying hong kong protests and you're talking about you know the protests as though they're grassroots uh-uh that's daniel and then he smears china shaming chinese for being racist against africans not talking about the issues behind that propaganda so daniel yeah, so unfortunately, Nathan, figures like Nathan, Rich, and Daniel Dumbrell, I don't know if Nathan, because Nathan's, uh, Daniel's a big figure now. Maybe they don't need, I don't know, maybe these, um, I don't know, maybe it's been decided that they don't really need Nathan anymore. I don't know what's going on with Nathan. So, but I'm pretty sure, well, his website, the IP address is in the U.S. now. Um uh, it's got, he's got a Facebook page. There's been no activity there. 
Um, it's just weird. He just suddenly disappeared. Um, but he's not a nobody. He came from Hollywood. And it's kind of strange that it's suspicious. I mean, I think his rise, it's, it's a bit like, it's like Daniel Dumbrell's. He's been aggressively promoted, um, uh, supposedly pro-China, but not really if he's not debunking ultimately where the virus really came from. And if he's saying the new fate of, face of COVID-19 is, is France, no. Um, that's still kind of pushing the official narrative in a way. So that's this information. I don't know. It's just very strange. What's going on with Nathan? I don't know. So this guy, he, yeah. So this video is from yesterday. He just put this out, but he's a propaganda. He's an anti-Chinese propagandist, but he, he did question what's going on. Oh yeah. He said Nathan's website was gone in his video. Well, I checked and it's like, no, it's gone. It's not gone. No, it's not gone. So I don't know. I think, I don't think Nathan's in China now. Um, so something's up. So if his website, if the IP address is in the US, I don't know what's going on there. Um, so missing in action since uh, mid-May, so over a month, month and a half now. Yeah, Nathan Rich, missing in action, missing in action. Anyway, I guess that's it for, for now. I just um, wanted to talk a little bit about Nathan and how he's suddenly disappeared. I was going to talk about him before. Is Interesting background, but anyway, he's disappeared now. Um, so anyway, that's it for now, I guess. Thanks for your patience. I will talk to you again soon. Bye.